Hello and welcome to our next video about databases. This time we are talking about database models. I said already last time, database model is basically the, the basic organization structure of, of a database, you know, of the data in the database. I will now describe some of these uh, database models yeah? and yeah, we will get to the most important one. The first one, the first one was hierarchical, 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 the hierarchical database model. Yeah. Hierarchical model. How is this working? There was one root, yeah, one element, which was called root. Under each element, there might be one or even more other elements. So every element except root has exactly one parent element and might have several child elements. And if I want to search my data, I will always have to start in root and find my way through. So the searching was very efficient. Yeah? So this looks a little bit like, this was also called data tree. Yeah? This is, looks a little bit like a file system. Yeah? Some databases allowed only two kids by, by parent, but most of them allow more. Yeah? But each child element has exactly one parent element and this is this is the base property of such hierarchical model okay so one one thing which used this hierarchical model was this IMS IMS DB from IBM this was this hierarchical model this was one of the first database systems ever there are no relationships between childs and the grandparents. Let's call them grandparents. Yeah? There is no relationship possible. And that's the big disadvantage. Yeah? Sometimes you want to have relationships also. Yeah? This then was modified and the outcome was a so-called network database model. Yeah? Network model. This network model means that there can also be relations somewhere in between. Yeah? Does not really matter how many parents in which in which uh, hierarchical order they are, it can be just somehow yeah, connected. Okay? This means I can really model quite a lot of data inside here inside the structure. However, the efficiency might lose. This is also no longer called root here. Yeah? This is no longer called root. This is just some element. Yeah? So there is no clear point for starting a search. Yeah? Just the search might be different or difficult this way. Yeah? However, it can be very complex. So one, one thing was this UDS from Siemens for instance. Yeah. This was one network or is one network uh, database model. Okay. Hierarchical model, network database model. The network model was somehow development of the hierarchical model. Okay. Then, you know, uh, in, in programming there was this object-oriented programming or there is this object-oriented programming. Since decades this object-oriented programming is gaining more and more usage. Yeah. So there was a small step to object-oriented database model. Yeah. Object-oriented There's one object defined, object class. Yeah. So 
so-called class, yeah, object class, and this object class has several properties. Property 1, 2, pack, 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 quite a lot of. Yeah? And it also has methods, methods to retrieve the properties or write the properties. Method 1, method 2, whatever, also a lot of methods. And now what is stored inside this object-oriented model is an object of this class. Object of class. And every object of class has these properties and these methods. Yeah? So there's maybe one, there's maybe second one, there's a third one, whatever. Yeah. Maybe a different class, then an object of class 2 and so on. Yeah. This was object or is object-oriented model. There is also an object, uh, object relational database, yeah, object-oriented, and there is also object relational model. Yeah. It's pretty much the same. However, between two objects can be some sort of relation. So object-oriented database. Then there are such things like document-oriented databases. Yeah. Document-oriented. Document-oriented model. What is this? The data is stored in so-called documents. There's maybe a document 1, there's a document 2, and so on, document 3. What is inside a document is not really specified. So this makes it very powerful. It doesn't really care if this is really a document or if this is a picture or whatever. Yeah? So the document is not specified. Yeah? However, each document probably has some entries. Yeah? Entry 1, entry 2, entry 3. And here we also have entries. Yeah, so it's like a word file, like a document. Yeah? What is not possible in this document-oriented thing is that there are relations between the documents. So that we say, okay, this entry 2 here is exactly the same like this entry 1. This is not possible. So if I change this entry 1 in document 1, yeah, this entry 2, even if it should be the same like this, will stay the same. Yeah? This makes it very difficult to find a consistency. Yeah? There, this document-oriented thing has a problem. Yeah? The name of the document is the identification identificator, and this is exactly describing one document, and I can change some entries in this one document, but not automatically somehow change the other document with it. Okay? Document-oriented model. Some of you might have heard it. There is HCL nodes is such. Former known as IBM nodes. Former known as Lotus nodes. Yeah. So if you're old enough, you probably heard of Lotus nodes. This is how this was working. Yeah. Compared the next thing I'm going to tell you, oh, those other models are outnumbered, simply. Yeah? The dominating database model nowadays, the really dominating database model nowadays, is the relational database model. Relational.
take the pace. Model. This is that database model which is currently in use. Yeah. The database. Okay. How is this working? In relational databases, the data is, so, is stored in so-called tables or relations. The tables, they do have different attributes, so-called attributes. So there is attribute 1. Attribute 2, attribute 2, 3, 4, whatever. Yeah? Can be a lot of attributes. Yeah? Every column in this table is one attribute. Yeah? Every line every line is one data set one set of data yeah? so called this is a data set record or tuple yeah? is line column is attribute and all attributes which belong together is one data set yeah? and the table has a table name or relation name So there is a table which has a name. Each table has different attributes. The attributes also have name and type. So there is a, date, a name for this attribute and a type for this attribute. For instance, I don't know, the name is given name and the type is characters, 20 characters. Okay. This is how such relational database bases are stored. Why they are called relational? Because there can be several tables yeah, with a lot of attributes and they can one attribute for instance. Yeah. Let's think of a uh, pupil. Pupil database. So this is Name, given name, birth date, uh, number, uh, school, uh, scholar number, and so on, class, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now, now, there is also a table which uh, is, is not called a pupil name, it's called a topic name. Yeah? There are several topics, mechanics, automation technology, uh, I don't know, German, English, pa, 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 mathematics, the topics which are given in school. Yeah? And there might be a third table yeah, which is combining. It says, okay, this pupil is visiting this topic. Okay? This pupil is visiting this class and so on and so on and so on. So there are relations between tables and other tables possible. One attribute can point to another table. Say, look there, it's this. Then it's written here just person, and in the person table is written uh, given name, birthday, blah, 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 blah. Yeah? There can be relations. To have a relation, yeah, it is important to identify such one record, one data set, one tuple, with one key. Yeah? There must be one key inside. Yeah? A key is something which identifies exactly one line in a table. Yeah? Key is unique in table. So there is one attribute, at least one attribute, 
I have to select as key value and this one attribute has to be different in each line. Okay. This is why it's probably a bad idea to use the name as, as key element. Okay. Because then there would only be one Huber, Huber okay. and one Meyer okay. and one Smith. Not possible. There are a lot of Huber, Meyer and Smiths. This is why this key is often something a little bit artificial, just a number which is growing. Yeah? Pupil number, person number, personal number, for instance, or whatever. Yeah? But this key is necessary to be able to reference. This is the relational data ship database model. Yeah? And this is the model. It, I mean, it doesn't sound too complicated right now. Right? But we will see in, during our, our, our exercises, yeah, we need to pay attention. Yeah? Because we really have to think about which data must be inside the database, which data must be inside one table, yeah? and which data must be a reference in this table. So this is called data modeling. And this data modeling is of great importance at relational databases. We will, we will get to this. I said most, most uh, spreaded database model. So there are quite some uh, databases out there which are commercially. Yeah? For instance, Oracle. Oracle database. This is since 1979. This is the oldest data, relational database ever. Yeah? Then there's, the, of course, the Microsoft. Microsoft SQL Server yeah, from Microsoft and there is DB2 DB2 from IBM yeah. these are the biggest commercially used ones yeah. Microsoft has a second commercial this is Access however this is mainly used in small business and home applications and so on because it's part of Office a big databases it's the SQL server yeah. and there are a, bun a bunch of, of open source products yeah. for instance MySQL yeah. this is meanwhile it's owned by Oracle yeah. and there is Maria DB that's the most common ones yeah. Maria DB is a so-called fork of MySQL when MySQL was bought by Oracle the former producers or the former heads of MySQL made a branch, a fork, uh, and this is the youngest one. This is since 2009. MySQL was in 1995, first time. Yeah. Oracle SQL Server, 1989. DB2, 1993. Oracle, 1979. Access 1992 was the first, I think 1992 was the first version of Access. So this is, this is so the products. We are going to use MariaDB. Why we are going to use MariaDB? Because it's, it's in the repository of our, our Raspberry Pi. We just have to install it. Maybe one hint. This MariaDB running on a Raspberry Pi just with this SD card, this is not a lucky combination. For us, in testing reasons, that's okay. But you know, this SD in databases, a lot of writing is happening. Yeah? Especially if we collect data automatically, yeah? like measuring the temperature and record every five seconds the temperature, which is outside. For whatever reason, does not really matter. But there are a lot of write uh, things. And an SD card is not as well in writing. Okay, so maybe it's a good idea to have this database on some on a hard drive or things which are able for more write cycles. Yeah? Well, the Raspberry Pi has USB ports, we can plug something in, but this makes this test environment a little bit more complicated. So I decided to use MariaDB standard on 
on, on our Raspberry because everything else will work exactly the same. It's just the storage. Yeah? So it's just the physical part which should be exchanged. One thing, these relational databases uh, have the same. Yeah? This relational database uh, management system. They usually use a thing, a, a thing which is called SQL, Structured Query Language. Yeah. This is the language where I can tell my database management system, hey, please write this ad attribute, this value, yeah? make a new data set, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. We will get to know this. This is what we're going to train, SQL. There are SQL interfaces, it has even in the name Oracle, I think was the first SQL database ever. Access has SQL interface, DB2 has SQL, MySQL has also a name, and MariaDB is also SQL. Yeah? SQL is in relational database everywhere, and because all other databases are not that common, yeah, they are even referred to, doesn't really matter which model they are using, they even refer to non-SQL database. Yeah? So this is the rest. Relational database model. This is what we are going to do, and we are going to do this by learning SQL. That's our net, the topic of our next videos. Okay. For this time, thank you very much for listening, and goodbye.